Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. <laughs> I am all for Cino's live. <laughs> and I'm basically here just to run down what I think about the trade. Um, This is what I don't understand. <laughs> These guys can make all these moves, but Kobe just wanted Chris Paul, and he couldn't get no damn Chris Paul. This this is a travesty. This just shows you how weak the league is now, <laughs> like all together. Now, basically, by the Brooklyn Nets getting James Harden, I'm going I'm to go by the teams one by one, and I'm going to break down who won, who did what, and all that crap. But everybody wants to hear about the big fish which is the Brooklyn Nets. Um, basically, the Nets traded their future, <laughs> their next four or five years. So, um, let's see. Okay, so the Nets get James Harden. They swap with the Rockets, Carries LeVert, Dante Exum, I mean, excuse me, let me rewind that. James Harden is going to the Rockets. In return, the Brooklyn Nets will get, I mean, the, the Rockets will get three Brooklyn first rounders, a one, a first rounder from Milwaukee, and they'll get four first round swaps. So they're basically going to swap with um, Brooklyn for first round swaps. So they'll swap the best or the worst picks between each other. So let's say um, in the Rockets have a first round draft, the Nets will have a draft pick of the Rockets, but it'll be the worst pick probably later in the, in the draft. Now, the Rockets will also, the Cavaliers will get Jared Allen and Torian Prince. Okay, they're going to the Cavs, and the Rockets will get Victor Oladipo and Dante Exum. Exum is coming from the Cavs, and Oladipo goes to the Rockets. The Pacers get Carice LeVert in the second rounder. The Pacers, to me, won this trade, <laughs> flat out. But I'm going to tell you why they got that trade. Um, I'll break it down to you. The Brooklyn Nets basically got James Harden because of the Kyrie Irving situation. Kyrie Irving decided to sit out due to what happened. Um, this all stems back at the bubble. If you remember, Kyrie Irving wanted the players to sit out and get justice. But what's funny to me is you guys blast Kyrie, but y'all give LeBron a pass for wanting to continue with the bubble season when he should have sat out and forced the owner's hands. But he's not going to do it. He's a token Negro. So basically, with this, they have James Harden as insurance in case Kyrie just says forget it because Kyrie is fed up with the league. The league and the owners have not done anything to respect the black athletes and those who are less fortunate athletes who have family members who are less fortunate. So they are pissed off. There, Kyrie is ticked the hell off. He's basically ticked off and he's off the grid right now. And he's chilling. And for some reason, pictures leaked with um him at his sister's party. They tried to say Drake was there, which he wasn't. The league will try to, if they find out that he is guilty of the protocol, he could be fined up to 400 some thousand a game. You know, they want to stick it to him. You know. Because they don't like Kyrie. Because Kyrie's rocking the boat. So James Harden coming there will work. Because James Harden and, and KD have worked together before. They know how to play with one another. The thing is going to be if Kyrie comes back, how will it be? Or if he comes back. And also what I learned from the Carcino chat when chatting with Sino and them. They have three open roster spots. So they could bring some more length in there. Because they're going to need some length. Because you lost Jared Allen. To me, that's going to be a big blow. You lost a young rim protector and a guy who was getting better each game. 
he was giving you like 18 and 18 damn near. So you lose that. And DeAndre Jordan to me is done. He, he's done. He's only good for about 15 to 18 minutes. If that. So the Nets will have to go sign some pieces to add to their bench. Their starting five will be okay, but they need a bench. Now, the guy Claxton, that, that tall guy, he's pretty good. They weren't playing him that much, but he's pretty good. He can rim protect as well. He can um, score on offense. I think he's a little better offensively than Allen, but they're going to miss Allen. You know, his, his toughness, his, his competitiveness, and his willing to sacrifice himself to block the shot. Um, them having, you know, their, their starting lineup to me does not look that great to me, but um, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see that the season is still young. So they have time, basically, to get everything together. Everything will, will probably be together. But for right now, the Nets, to me, I give them a D- minus in this trade. I didn't like this trade. I give it a D- minus because in the words of my boy Detroit T., Three black holes can destroy a universe. <laughs> and you have three guys who are ball dominant. I didn't like this trade. I felt they should have kept their pieces, but we'll see what happens, man. Um, I don't like it in the long run. I still think the Pacers are better than them. And I just believe as a team, the Pacers are going to be better because they've been together longer. And it just doesn't look good, but I give them a D. Now, the Rockets, all the Rocket fans are happy. They like, we got rid of the cancer. Yeah, 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 we're back together. Yeah. You know, all of them are hyped up. <laughs> all of them are real hyped up. So, to me, I give, <coughs> I give their, um, I give their pickup a C. And people are going to be like, a C? Look, we got all these picks. Look, we've seen teams who get a lot of picks. They don't know how to draft well. I, this is a wait and see. Now, the long term, I could flip this C into an A, depending on the players that they get. But looking at the college landscape, it's not really a lot of great players coming out of it. Now, if John Wall stays healthy and DeMarcus Cousins stay healthy and they're able to stay healthy for long periods of time, hey, this I could turn that C into a B, potentially an A. It could be a win for them, but you have this is a wait and see. But for right now, I give them a C or a C minus. Victor Oladipo and Dante Exum. Their talent is no question. They are both talented players. The problem with them is staying healthy. Staying healthy. And I don't think they can do that. We'll see, but you already got two guys who are injured prone in John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins. You got to see if they last for the whole season. But to me, I give them a C or a C minus for this. It, I didn't really like it. But we'll see. Um, the, the picks, I give them an A for the picks. But for the players, I give them an F plus. Because Oladipo can't stay healthy. He's a, he's a great, phenomenal talent. But he can't stay healthy. So we'll see. I mean, that's why I give it a total of a C. Or a C minus. So um, we'll see, man. As the season go on. And then they got Rodion's Kurix. Um, I believe he came from the Pacers with Oladipo. So, or he came from the Cavs. I don't know. But um, we'll see. Now, the Cavaliers. I give the Cavaliers a B- minus because they've added to their strength, which is their middle, which is their centers and their power forwards. I give them a B minus or a B or a regular B. 
Jared Allen is an upcoming young rim protector. He's going to be a solid player for years to come. He just has to work on a post game and work on his hook shot. He, If he works on his footwork, his post game, and a hook shot at least, or a fadeaway, man, he'll be dangerous. But we'll see. Right now, he's a specialist. He's great on the defensive end. He's a great rim protector. You know, he'll get dirty. He'll get dirty with you, down low and everything. So, we'll see. But to me, this is a B-. minus. The Cavs are surprisingly good on defense, and they just added to their strength. That's why I give it a B- minus or a B, because they've added to their strength, and they added more length with Torian Prince. Torian Prince is a good to great defender, and he can score the ball. He can shoot the three. He can score from the mid-range a little bit, but not at a high clip, but he, he's decent. And he'll work well with the team. Claxton, I mean Sexton, I said Claxton. Sexton is coming into his own as, to me, the top player on the team next to um, Garland. And then um, they're still trying to wait for Porter to come back. Um, he's being kind of immature, but they're trying to see if they can get him back. If they get him back, add it with the deep, um, Andre Drummond, who's balling. And Kevin Love is hurt right now. He's always hurt, but they don't need Kevin Love. They can play with or without him, which is a great thing to do. If your team could play with or without a superstar or a main star player, you will be fine. And the Cavaliers are looking good. Um, we'll see how it is in a month after the Super Bowl. We'll see how they are when things get thick and when the competition rises. We'll see how they are. We'll see. Um, but I give them a B minus or a B. Um, and I like Torian Prince and Allen. They are going to do wonders for that team. And I think they may come off the bench. They may come off the bench and add firepower to that bench. And the Cavs are going to be dangerous, man. The East is going to be tough. The past three or four years, the East has been tougher than the West. And that's been a long time since that happened. <laughs> Seriously. It's been a long time. Now, the Indiana Pacers, who I believe won this trade, Caris Levert with Justin Holiday and Aaron Holiday, Malcolm Brogdon, you have Miles Turner and Sabonis, and you have a bench with Sumter coming off of it. This Pacer team is dangerous. This team is looking like a third or fourth seed at best. Seriously, they beat the Warriors, and <laughs> it's crazy. I talked this in existence. I made a video last night talking about after I saw the Pacers, I was like, man, they look a lot better without Oladipo. They may need to trade them. And then he got traded. <laughs> ain't that crazy how things happen? Man, I ain't even mean to speak that in, in existence. I'm sorry, Old Depot, but <laughs> it's time to do what you got to do. But um, Karis Levert will be a very solid player. He can play both sides of the ball. He can score. You know, he can hit the mid-range. The mid-range has been dead. He can hit the mid-range. He can post you up. I believe he could turn into a superstar for the Indiana Pacers. That's why I give the Indiana Pacers a A or an A minus. They get that because, and they got a second rounder. So that'll help them. They really didn't give up their first picks. They could add to him and they could add to Malcolm Brogdon. The Pacers are going to be dangerous the next four or five years. Miles Turner and Sabonis are turning into a, a mini twin towers. One, they both can shoot outside and play inside. Miles Turner is playing a lot tougher. He's standing more firmer inside the um paint. So we'll see, man. But I like the Pacers. I think the Pacers are better than Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn took a, a step or two back. Um, I think the Pacers took a step or two up. And I think the Cavs moved up one or two. And um, the Rockets, I think they'll, I think if they stay healthy, they can make the playoffs. So that's how I feel about the whole thing. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think about it. If you agree with my grades, like I said, the Rockets, I give them a C. Um, the Nets, I give them a D or a D plus. Um, I give the Pacers an A minus. 
or no an A, excuse me. The Cavs, I give a B. Um, and that's how I look at it. But um, let me know in the comment section if you like it or not. Um, thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this, hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you would like to donate to the page, you can cash at me at the word welcome number two hdii tv thank you for listening and we're out deezy